Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking, Creating, and Conversation. How's everybody doing today on this Tuesday? This weather? I just don't know, y'all. It's going from extra, extra hot to extra cold. How we go from 90 degrees to 65 today? What's going on, y'all? Something got to be going on. <laughs> I'm out and about today. I guess I guess you could say today is my freebie day, y'all. I guess you could say today is my freebie day. I I love to uh have a good coupon. Who don't like to have a good coupon? <laughs> so when I get these apps on the phone, um a lot of places they send you coupons for stuff. So I had a few freebies in some of the apps today, so I decided to come out this morning and get my Beach, y'all. Right now, I just got done uh, going to the um, I just got done going to the uh, Tato Bell. I had a coupon on my app from the Taco Bell for a free breakfast sandwich, y'all. So I said, well, why not give it a try? So this is a breakfast crunch wrap from Taco Bell. And you can get it with uh, bacon, eggs, hash browns, or you can get it with sausage, eggs, hash brown, and cheese. So I just got I just got a regular one without no bacon, without no sausage. I'm just going to have the um, you know what? It's actually not mm -hmm. it's actually not too bad, y'all. It's got hash browns, eggs, cheese on like a toast toasted a toasted tortilla bun or tortilla bread flour tortilla bread it's actually not bad it is seasoned you got the hash browns and stuff here but you know what if I made this at home what I would do a little bit different, I think I would, um, I might would add some pinto beans and some rice in here. That probably would be real good. Some pinto beans and some rice in there. So if I made one at home, I would add, but it was not too bad, not too bad. And after I went and got the Taco Bell, I went and got some Starbucks, y'all. <laughs> and yes, the Starbucks was free too. Let me tell you how the Starbucks was free. So at the end of the year, the program that I work for, um, some of the parents that give you gifts at the end of the year, ain't that nice, y'all? That's so nice when the parents think about the teachers sometimes. <laughs> so at the end of the year, I got a couple of gift cards, and one of my gift cards was a gift card to Starbucks. So I got free Starbucks this morning too, y'all. This is a um, an iced passion tea, but I added some strawberry puree and some liquid um, cane sugar to it. And you know what? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. I probably could have added another couple pumps of cane sugar because it's not really that sweet, but 
Maybe I didn't eat all that sweet. No way. <laughs> the strawberries give it a good sweetness, but I think I could have put a little bit more extra. That's not too bad, y'all. Not too bad. I could have put a little bit more sugar in there, but that's okay. So that's my free breakfast this morning. And I am sitting in a lot. As soon as I get done eating my free breakfast, I'm sitting in a lot. Let me show y'all where I'm at. That's going to be my next freebie, y'all. I'm going right inside the bath and body works. Because I got a freebie for that, too. So, look at that, y'all. Freebie morning. I got me some free Taco Bell, free Starbucks. And I'm going to Bath and Body to get my, my uh, free item out of Bath and Body. I love it when they put the freebies. In your apps, y'all. <laughs> if you don't got you know extra apps on your phone to get y'all freebies, y'all better get these apps on this phone so y'all can uh, have access to some of these freebies. <laughs> but um, I wanted to get on here and kind of tell y'all a little story. So when I was younger, um. I went to church a whole lot. We went to church a whole lot. Sometimes we would go like three times out the week. We would go to services in the morning, services in the evening. And a lot of times we had uh, church twice on Sundays we would go. So, you know, when you're younger, you like uh, this little bit too much church. <laughs> You could be thinking of other things that you want to do besides go to church. So that's how it was most of my childhood. Uh, we would go to services a lot. So when I got older, I would say probably around the age of 16, um, you know, you get old enough to where you can you gotta kind of make your own decision on if you're going to go or not. So... When I got old enough to where, you know, I could make that choice on if I wanted to go or not. Guess what, y'all? I wasn't going. <laughs> I was not going. I had felt like I'm burnt out of church. I don't know what's going on. We going here all the time and not really getting a full understanding of why we going all the time. Like, I know. I know, uh, I believe in Jesus, but if you're really not uh, receiving and understanding a lot of things when you're younger, you're just like, okay, I am over this because I cannot see in the current moment how this is going to benefit me in life other than me knowing Jesus. I know Jesus is real. I know, you know, the Lord is real, but beyond that, I had no deeper understanding at that time of what that meant. So when I got to be 16, um, I quit going. I wasn't going because I was burned out of going all the time. Stay away from church for a very long time. I mean, a long time, y'all. I went through all of my 20s. Um not going back to church. You know, I still prayed, but I wasn't reading my Bible. I didn't have an understanding of the Bible. Of course, you're not going to have an understanding of it if you're not reading it. I had some uh, remembrance of some things uh, from my childhood, but, you know, not really knowing a whole lot. So I want to tell y'all the story of how I came back to going about, came back around to coming back to church. Um, and I, this whole, this whole uh, thing was orchestrated by God, the whole thing, um, 
I remember it being a holiday, um, Easter, right? And this is a big holiday where, you know, people, if you don't go to church on a regular basis, everybody seems to come to church <laughs> on Easter Sunday. That's like the one day that you do go, if, even if you, you know, if you don't go, if you're not in the habit of going, that's the one day that you come is on Easter. Church is always packed on Easter. So I remember that particular Easter, um, me and my family were going out to eat. And, oh, let me rewind a little bit. So before we went to go eat, my father would ride around the city a lot. So one particular day, he's riding around the city and the church that I go to now, they were outside evangelizing. So they're passing out flyers for the church. And on the flyers, you know, was the picture of the pastor of the church. So they're passing them out. They give my father one of the flyers. He comes home and he gives it to me. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, why, uh, why you give me this? He was like, I don't know. I'm driving around and these church people outside and they gave me this flyer. So <clears throat> I'm bringing it to you. So I said, okay. So I look at the flyer and I'm like, this man look, <laughs> this man look kind of familiar. Like I have seen him before. And so I I th throw the flyer, you know, on the table, didn't really think about it. And so later on, you know, we fast forward. It's the holiday. We're uh getting ready to go out to eat. And so I'm like, well, this person looks familiar. So I'm gonna ask my sister if she knows who this is, because I just feel like she knows who this person is. So I'm bringing a flyer. We're going out to eat. My sister starts talking about uh, that God had been pressing upon her to come back to church because she hadn't been to church in a long time neither. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, you go ahead and you go do that. You, you know, have fun <laughs> with that because I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going. So I said, but you know what? I said, uh, my dad got this flyer for this church. I think you know who this person is. I said, you know this person? So I hand her the flyer. And she's like, yeah. She's like, I know him. I know him. We went to school together and he was preaching when he was <laughs> he was preaching when he was in school. She said, but you know what? I um I've been thinking about going to church because the Lord's been pressing on me to go to church. So I think I'm a I'ma go to his church. I said, Oh, oh, okay. Well, you let me know how that go. And so that next Sunday, she goes to church by herself, right? So she goes to church and, you know, I talk to her later on that day and ask her, well, how, how is church going? How did church go? And she's like, oh, it went good. It went fine. And, you know, she told me about what he preached about. And I said, oh, okay, well, that kind of sounds kind of interesting. And so she goes a few more times, right? She's in the habit. She's going back to this church, right? And so after she had went a few times, she's like, I think I'm finna join this church. I was like, you finna join the church? I said, oh, okay. But in between time, you know, she's telling me about what this, um, pastor is preaching about so I said okay so we would have these long conversations about what he preached about at church you know we had these conversations we de these debates 
And I remember one particular time we were talking because it had became, you know, a routine about us talking about what he preached about. And so I said, well, how was service today? And we get into this conversation. She said, you know what? She said, we always talking about the preacher. She said, but why don't you come in here for yourself? I said, come here for myself. She said, yeah, just come to church and hear it for yourself. I said, well, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. So a few more times go past and I said, okay, I'm going to go to church and see what this is about. See what's going on. You know, initially it was really to really get a feel for the place of where my sister was at. I'm finna see, you know, well, what's going on, what they, you know, telling my sister, what kind of people these is. <laughs> so I'm going in really to check on her, right? Now, all of this Jesus set up, even from my dad getting the flyer and bringing the flyer home, all of this is Jesus set up. So I go to church with her one day and I can't really, can't even really tell you what the sermon was about. I really can't. But afterwards, she's like, well, come on up and, and meet the pastor and his wife. So I said, okay, um, I'll go up and meet him. And so you know, very nice, very nice, very welcoming and he said, I've been watching you come for uh, a couple Sundays. He said, you have a church home? And I said, no. He said, you have a church pastor? No. He said, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I'm glad to see you. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you keep coming. Keep on coming. And so um, I met his wife. Um, and, you know, she said hello and, and gave me a hug in the like the feeling I got um, when she hugged me was like, okay, now this is a genuine, this is a genuine hug. This is a genuine person right here. She ain't, you know, faking. It's like I could actually really literally feel it when she hugged me. And I said, oh, well, okay, Lord, <laughs> what's going on here? So I come a few more times and... Easter rolls around again. And now it's on my heart. I'm going to join this church. I've been coming regularly, you know, really ex getting excited about the word of God. And I said, I think I, after all this time, I think I'm going to join the church. So I had already had it set in my mind. I said, when Easter Sunday rolled around, I said, he do altar call. I'm getting up and I'm going up there for altar call. So service is over. He preaches service is over. And he does the altar call. And I'm still sitting in my seat, y'all. I'm still sitting in my seat. <laughs> and I had to hype myself up that I'm going up to the altar when they do altar call. I'm still sitting in my seat. And so he calls again for people to come up. And my sister looks at me. And in that moment, um, something just broke in my heart. Like, well, you know where you're supposed to be at. So in that moment, she's like, I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. So my sister grabbed my hand and I walked up to the altar, and he said, I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting on you to come. And when I turned around, my mom had come up to the altar, too. She hadn't been to church in a, a, a little bit. And she, she came, when I came, she came, you know, and that's a lesson, you know, for some and how we're connected to each other. We're connected. Some people can't progress and move until you 
progressive move because they're connected to you. They're waiting on what you have, what God has given you to give them, to help them. So if you don't move, they won't move. But how I said uh, God just completely orchestrated the whole thing from the flyer to my sister to me to my mother. God knew I never would have come back to a church again until my sister came, which was what caused me to move. When I came, that's what caused my mom to move. But all of this was in the plan, um, in the plan and workings of God. And I'm still at the same church, y'all. I'm still at the same church. I love my bishop. I love my first lady. I'm still at the church and I'm still growing. I'm still learning. God is still um, unveiling himself to me. He's still unveiling me to me um, in everyday life. But if somebody asks me today, would I have changed anything and I would say no it has not been <clears throat> an easy journey but it's a necessary journey so for anyone out there that is debating on making that choice you're still going back and forth in your heart about giving your life to Christ let today be that day that you uh, say yes, that you say yes to God. Um, and the scripture says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that he died for your sins and raised from the grave, that you can be saved. You can make that confession today you don't have to be in a church I did it in a church um, but you don't have to be in a church you confess that you can confess that right now today and I tell you um, from that point like I said things haven't been easy but they they're definitely it definitely has been a necessary journey even to get me to the point of being here and talking with you all about it today so I hope this touches somebody's heart I hope this encourages um, somebody's heart that God is still waiting on you even though it took me all that time from when I was 16 to approximately maybe about seven years ago for me that was a long time, y'all, a long time. And Jesus, just like, you know, my bishop said in that moment, I've been waiting on you. That's how I feel like God was talking to me, saying, I've been waiting on you. You know, I, I did all this, <laughs> did all of this to lead you back to me. And that's how it is for a lot of you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Some of you, he's been pulling and tugging at your heart, and you know it. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. So I just wanted to get on here and share my story of uh, my journey of how God pulled me in, you know, not just to the church building, but to him. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm going to go in here and get my free bath and body works. <laughs> but until next conversation, I'll talk to y'all soon. Have a blessed day. Bye.